Today, the two groups of Negroes, the one in the, the north, the other in the south, represent those divergent ethical tendencies, the first tending toward radicalism, the other toward hypocritical compromise. It is no idle regret with which the white south mourns the loss of the old-time Negro, the frank, honest, simple old servant who stood for the earlier religious, religious age of submission and humility. Today, the young Negro of the South who would succeed cannot be frank and outspoken, honest and self-assertive, but rather he is daily tempted to be silent and wary, politic and sly. He must flatter and be pleasant, endure petty insults with a smile, shut his eyes to wrong. In too many cases, he sees positive personal advantage in deception and lying. His real thoughts, his real aspirations must be guarded in whispers. He must not criticize. He must not complain. Patience, humility, and adroitness must, in these growing black youth, replace impulse, manliness, and courage. With this sacrifice, there is an, econ there is an economic opening and perhaps peace and some pr prosperity. Without this, there is riot, migration, or crime. Nor is this situation peculiar to the southern United States. It is not rather the only method by which underdeveloped races have gained the right to share modern culture. The price of culture is a lie. On the other hand, in the North, the tendency is to emphasize the radicalism of the Negro, driven from his birthright in the South by a situation at which every fiber of his more outspoken and assertive nature revolts. He finds himself in a land where he can scarcely earn a decent living amid the harsh competition and the color discrimination. At the same time, through schools and periodicals, discussions and lectures, he is intellectually quickened and awakened. The soul, long pent up and dwarfed, suddenly expands in a newfound freedom. What wonder that every tendency is to excess, radical complaint, radical remedies, bitter denunciation or angry silence. Some sink, some rise. The criminal and the sensualist leave the church for the gambling hell and the brothel and fill the slums of Chicago and Baltimore. The better classes segregate themselves from the group life of both white and black and form an aristocracy, cultured but pessimistic, whose bitter criticism stings while it points out no way of escape. They despise the submission and subserviency of the Southern Negroes, but offer no other means by which a poor and oppressed minority can exist, exist side by side with his masters. Feeling deeply and keenly the tendencies and opportunities of the age in which they live, their souls are bitter at the fate which drops the veil between. And the very fact that this bitterness is, is natural and justifiable only serves to intensify it and make it more maddening. So this was uh, a little reading from the book, The Souls of Black Folk. And um, W.E.B. Du Bois is talking about the two different types of um, blacks that he felt existed. One in the north, one type of black in the north and one type in the south. Uh, I want to hear what you have to say with this. Uh, leave me a message, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Peace.